whatever it is lord jesus meet them where they're at lord god hallelujah in the name of jesus lord you know you know lord god you know what your people need today lord jesus hallelujah but we know that it's through your spirit lord god hallelujah it's not by power nor by might but it's by your spirit lord god we give you praise for that lord because we realize that when the enemy said no you said yes hallelujah you said yes to our lives you said yes the enemy tried to take us out lord god through sickness but god we know that you are a deliverer we know that you are a healer hallelujah we know we know hallelujah because you've done it before lord god hallelujah so that person that might be facing some sickness right now lord jesus hallelujah we know that's by your stripes that we are healed by your stripes we are healed so we give you praise right now in the name of jesus lord god we want your spirit to break the yokes hallelujah we want your spirit to break the chains today lord jesus the chains of depression lord god whatever it is hallelujah someone might even thought of committing suicide because it's gotten so hard we ask right now that your spirit in the name of jesus break the yoke in the name of jesus oh for committing suicide in the name of jesus oh for depression in the name of jesus oh god whatever it is lord god whatever it is lord god hallelujah we know that you can do it lord jesus in the name of jesus we give you praise god we give you praise right now lord jesus hallelujah we pray right now for the leader of this ministry oh god continue to lift him up continue to give him vision continue to let your word speak through him in the name of jesus right now lord god we even pray right now for lady ty right now continue to strengthen her oh god allow her to continue to be the leader for the women of this ministry in the name of jesus oh god we pray for the deacons we pray for the ministers we pray for the members of first fruits in the name of jesus and father while we're praying right now lord jesus even across the airwaves right now lord jesus oh god as they're listening in as they're watching in in the name of jesus meet them where they're at lord god you are omnipotent you are omnipresent oh god you're here and you're there at the same time lord jesus oh god allow your spirit to have its way lord jesus in the name of jesus let it flow through this ministry let it flow through this ministry hallelujah let it drop 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 down on us in the name of jesus oh god like dew drops from heaven in the name of jesus oh father we give you praise father we give you praise hallelujah and we believe that it's going to be done today we believe that it's going to be done that you're going to lift up souls we believe that you're going to do it today lord jesus hallelujah and so we give you praise in advance we give you glory in advance we give you honor in advance hallelujah for that miracle in the name of jesus is on the way and so father we will forever give your name the praise we will forever give your name the glory we will forever give you honor and it is so in jesus name now if you believe that today why don't you open up your mouths and lift up your hands and give god a praise hallelujah come on give him a praise hallelujah give him the honor hallelujah in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah praise team hallelujah i love you i love you i love you lord today because you care for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up lord i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise come on just join in and sing i love you i love you i love you 
I love you, Lord, today. Because, because you care for me. me. In such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up, Lord, I magnify you. Hallelujah, that's why. My, my, my soul belongs to you. You praise the price for me. Pay the price for me way back. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why, That's why my, my heart is filled with praise. Mm, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. When I think about what you've done for me, it's because you cared for, yes, for me in such a special way. That's why, That's why I, I want to lift you up. I lift you up. I magnify you. Whoa. That's why. I think about what you've done for me, Jesus. That's why, That's why my heart oh, is filled with praise. It's filled with praise. That's why, That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and give them praise. That's why, That's why my heart oh, is filled with my cup and let it overflow. That's why, That's why my heart oh, is filled with fill my cup and let it overflow. Oh, That's why. Why, why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for being here. First fruits today. Those here in the sanctuary and live. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to continue to praise and worship him in your own way. There's no space and time between where God is. He's omnipresent. And I ask you to get with us and just let him move on you. Let the glory fall on you. Thank you, Jesus. Call 
done when we proclaim your great name, your great name, King Jesus, no other name, King Jesus, none stronger when we call on you, things change when we call on your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power, power in the name. Oh, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Things change when I call. Things change when I call you, Jesus. Things change when we call your name. We call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. I'm free when I call you Jesus. I'm free when I call your name. I'm free when I call you Jesus. I'm free when I call your name. When I call your name. When I call your name, 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 when I call your name. I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I call your name. I feel a breaking when I call. When I call your name. I feel a shifting when I call. When I Jesus 
I said there's something about the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Lily of the valley. Jesus. Bright and morning star. Jesus. When I call your name. Jesus. When I call your name. Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The devil trembles. Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. When I call your name. When I call your name. The rose of Sharon. Jesus. Bright and morning star. Jesus. Lily of the valley. Jesus. Lily of the valley. Jesus. He's a wheel. Jesus. In the middle of a wheel. Jesus. When I call your name. When I call your name. Jehovah Jireh. Jesus. He's my provider. Jesus. Jehovah Nisi. I don't have to worry. Jesus. I can call on you. Jesus. I can call on you. Jesus. When I call your name. Help me call. Jesus. Help me call. Jesus. Help me call on. Jesus. Help me call on. Jesus. If you need deliverance, Jesus. call on the name of. Jesus. When I call on your name, when I call your name. Call on him. Jesus. What you need. Jesus. Jesus got it. Jesus. What you need. Jesus. My Jesus got it. Jesus. Yes, he does. Jesus. When I call your name. To put your hands together like you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody understand what happens when you call his name? Hallelujah. I dare you to call his name. I dare you to call his name. When I call your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. When I call your name, clap your hands, come on, let's praise Him, Hallelujah! Oh, Jesus, He's in this house, if you believe He's here, He's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise Him, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He'll show up. Thank you, Jesus. When I call your name, Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Amen. Hallelujah. And while you are praising him, you may take a seat in the presence of the King. We are in the presence of our Savior this morning. What a wonderful thing to be in the house of God one more time. We welcome you to First Fruits Community Church. We're so thankful for all of you here. Can we put our hands together, amen, for our first lady, amen, over there. We just love her so much. That's right. We honor her, and we're so glad for the leading lady of this house, amen, and to our ministers, Minister Tucker, Minister DeWeese, amen, Minister Stover, Pastor Washington, hallelujah. Uh, we are so grateful for them, for our deacons, Deacon Johnson, Deacon Jones, Deacon Chisholm, amen. And to our musicians, we thank God for them, praise team. To the men, the women, the children of God, and our friends and family that are with us here and online. Now, I know most of y'all have a Facebook account, so I need you to do one thing real quick. Pull your phone out, all right, find our live stream right now and share it on your page can you do that and and once you do that go ahead and check in amen don't forget to check in because the more you do that the more people online will see us the more people will be able to reach with the gospel amen y'all y'all want to reach some souls amen well you could be our facebook evangelist right now i don't see all them phones coming out yet all right there they go there they go there they go that's good that's good i'm so grateful and thankful for all of us that are here again those that are online with us we're so grateful for you we have now we have a lot of announcements so I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time but we know there's been an uptick in cases uh, with with this new Delta variant amen and so I really appreciate y'all wearing your mask this morning and and uh, refraining from the high fives and the fist bumps and all the other stuff 
Amen. And uh, I think I believe y'all sanitized your hands on the way in. <laughs> and listen, we have done a phenomenal job, Brother Fred and the team and everybody here in the church, uh, keeping this place sanitized really well. We have a machine that we spray uh, the church several times throughout the week. Amen. That kills all viruses, bacteria, germs, and stuff like that. Amen. And uh, not only that, but we clean the high touch areas. Uh, and, and we just take care of the house. So I think this is one of the safest places you can be because outside of all of that, we got the blood of Jesus and we got our faith and we just believe, amen, that, uh, that uh, while we're not uh, foolishly believing, but we really do trust that what we can't do, God can do, amen. And so I just thank God. I put on the screen just, um, you know, try to stay six feet apart. I know it's a little challenging in here and that's okay. But uh, the, another big thing I don't think a lot of people realize is the reason why it's spreading so much you thought in the earlier part of the pandemic we would have learned, but people are just kind of creatures of habit. And so they stopped washing their hands and cleaning things in restaurants and stuff like that. But just washing your hands alone can make a big difference in uh, minimizing the spread of not just COVID, but just pretty much any type of germs. Amen. Um, and, you know, if you if you aren't feeling so good, that's why we have live stream. Like, don't even put yourself or anybody else at risk. If you don't feel good, stay home. If you're sick, or watch our live stream, amen? That's what we do that for, um, so we can reach people and also create that convenience too, right? Uh, live stream will never take place in person, but it is a beautiful option that we have, amen? And so I'm so grateful uh, for you uh, abiding by that. Uh, this afternoon at 5 to 6, we have our third class. Somebody say third. New members class. Now, I say new members, but remember, this is for existing members because this is a brand new curriculum. So even if you weren't here for the first two modules, feel free to come out tonight and join us at 5 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be really, really great. I want you out here. Um, Deacon Chisholm, could you do me a favor? Could you just stand up so they can see you? Look at that young ma man back there. <laughs> Amen. Our deacon, all my deacons look young. Amen. But I, um, he, he reached out to me. He does a lot in the community. Um, and he told us about a job fair that he has going on uh, on uh, tomorrow, praise God, at North Charleston High School from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, you can bring your resumes out. If you know anybody that's looking for a job, anything like that, um, please share this information with them. We're going to post it on our Facebook page. Uh, we sent it out via text and email uh, last week. But uh, we just want to let people know some people are looking for jobs. Amen. Uh, I know a lot of employers that need people to work. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I believe God's going to do just that, especially with our governor signing the bill where we stop the federal funding. That's, you know, some people get kind of comfortable when they get free money and they know they need to be working. And I get some people are scared to go back to work. I get that. But, uh, you know, yeah, he cut that off. So a lot of people are going to be looking for jobs. If that might be you that's looking for a job or something, make sure you uh, Go to the job fair if you can. I know it's going to be very safe. They're abiding by CDC guidelines and all that, so, so uh, it's there for you. Brothers, 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 we are meeting this Tuesday. Amen? Amen. Tuesday at what time? Uh, 6.30, that is. Praise God. So make sure you come out. I think the love ministry is meeting as well. Praise God. Shalomar, is that right? Yep. Amen. So the love ministry is going to be meeting at uh, 6.30 to about 7.30 or 8.00. And I think y'all having game night or something like that, right? Is that right, Shalimar? So the love ministry is for those young ladies. Uh, you see Shalimar in the back with the red on, with the pretty mask. That's my baby. That's my pretty lady right there. You can reach out to her. She's leading that up. Now, somebody say all women. That means all of the women present, all those that are watching online, any lady that wants to come out on Friday, August 27th, the women are gathering together for prayer at 7 p.m. Amen. How many know there's power in prayer? Amen. Yeah, we used to sing a song, prayer changes things. That was the whole song. Prayer changes. We sing it like 15 minutes until somebody get a breakthrough. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Destiny, you remember, bitch? Prayer changes things. I wish I could sing like, I, you know. But, uh, you know, it makes a difference. Prayer does make a difference because we're not begging God to remember something or he wouldn't be God. He knows it all. What we're really doing is we're creating this access, this relationship with our Heavenly Father that creates a flow of the manifestation of the promises of God. Now, the lady said, look, we want to see the manifestation. And so they're coming out Friday, August 27th at 7 p.m. for prayer. Make sure you are here. And then on that following day, Saturday, August 28th at 1 p.m., all of the ladies are going to gather over in the youth center for a collective fellowship. Amen. So they're bringing women of worth together, love ministry. Uh, amen. From the youngest to the oldest, we want all the ladies out here to fellowship in Jesus' name. Um, okay, something on the screen. Is that some food? I'm hungry. 
Y'all like picnics, man. Y'all like barbecue. We're going to put together a church picnic. Um, I'm asking all of the leaders um, here to stay after church for about maybe five to ten minutes because I want to uh, bring you up to speed on some, some ideas and some things that uh, I'm looking at for this picnic. And, of course, you know, our leadership does a great job making things happen, so that's why I need you to stay because I need you to make this happen. We're going to have a really good church picnic, and it's going to be beautiful. We're going to give you dates times, and all that stuff real soon, as soon as we put that together completely with the leadership team. Sounds good? Amen. It's time for a picnic. I don't think we've had a church picnic. We've had a little barbecues and stuff, but we're going to go all out. Watch. We're going to eat. I'm going I'm to barbecue some ribs for y'all. And you're going to be like, my God, I ain't no pastor could cook, too. Shoot, we can have a chili cook-off then if you want. I think Dick and Jones going to win that. Amen. All right. Just, just a few announcements. Um, I think that's everything as far as announcements concerned. Am I missing any announcements? Just want to make sure. Okay, good, good. Well, look at somebody say it's offering time. It's time to sow seed, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to sow seed. Amen. Praise God. My brother, you got a testimony? Say something. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, man. He, listen, you're going to pitch in, man. We're going to use you because I know you've been talking about that for a while. And I know you got so many skills, man. And we got some stuff that needs to be done. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh but look, you might need to stay after church then. <laughs> Hang out for a little bit after church because that's that you right on point. You right on point, ain't it? Yeah, we go. We, we putting something together to help make sure we keep this church clean. So, yeah, you stay after church. Yes. Amen. That's it. Amen. You see, that's what it's about, man. Look. I want y'all to be just as excited, man. We anybody excited to be here around godly people? Brother, we love you, man. We praying for uh, Mama Belinda. That's what I call her. And I know she doing. She coming along. Right, right. <laughs> she don't play, man. She she pushing now, but that's that's why we love her so much. And so y'all, when y'all all in prayer, remember Belinda, okay? She's the one that God pulled out of deathbed several times, y'all. God is really ministering to her. My wife and I are getting ready to go see her real, real soon. Um, and they live right behind here in Sangaree. So yeah, yeah. Well, look, brother, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for offering your services. We're just glad you're here. All right. Uh, it's offering time in the house of the Lord. Uh, many of you know how we do that. We have a church center app. You can download our app and there's a giving button on that app. All you got to do is just download it and uh, click First Fruits Community Church. And then once you download that on your app, um, then what you do is you just uh, click the give button. Really super simple to give. Um, and that app is used for much more than that, but you can give through it. Or if you have a phone, you want to send a text uh, you can send text FFCC to 833-359-9900, amen. And when you do that, you'll get a little link right back on your phone. You click it and you can give. Uh, if you have cash, check, and all that good stuff, there are envelopes, right? You see those envelopes in front of your seat? Uh, immediately after service, a deacon will be at the door where you can drop that on your way out, amen. But what I want you to do is I want you to get your seed in your hand, and then when you get it, stand on your feet, amen, because seed time is harvest time, and harvest time is seed time. And I just believe the more you sow and you do it cheerfully and faithfully and consistently, then God blesses those who do so. Amen. And, and I just have to say, I really appreciate your giving, uh, specifically because uh, we have so many things that we want to do, um, and we got some things on, on, on the horizon. Uh, even with our church in Tanzania, it's thriving, but they're tired of tired of having a not tired but they they have to stand under a tree imagine okay now today's raining right you know they have rain almost every day over there and when they want church they don't even have houses like we have so they can't gather in the houses like we do or we can so they have to go out under the tree and they get soaked and sometimes people don't want to come right i, I bet you half y'all probably wouldn't come if i said we have church outside in the parking lot today not have a y'all but maybe i don't know but but uh you know but they do that you know and so we're gonna uh, before we build them that 100-seat church over there, we're going to build a hut. Amen. It's real easy to build a hut over there, a mud hut. You know, something simple, man. And it's only like $400 to do that. So we're going to work on that and make sure we get them a little temporary place until we can organize as a big church and uh, take care of that. You know, the leadership team will get together and we'll put a plan together and roll it out to the church. But but I'm just giving you examples. Like we, we, we feed a lot of people through our food bank, you know, the lights, the electric, all the stuff that we got going on. 
All that costs money, but it is because you sow. It's because you generously give, both those of you here and online, that we're able to do what we're doing and go where we're going. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that and very thankful. For, so with your seed in your hand, if you gave through your phone, if you got an envelope, or maybe you don't have a seed this morning, that's temporary because you will have a seed. It's coming. Trust me. God says it's on the way. Look at somebody say, your seed is on the way. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you give seed to the sower. You give faith to those that receive. Amen. And I ask that you pour out a measure of faith that even in giving, they believe that you will answer in ways they, they've never experienced before. I thank you right now because you have opened up doors that no man can shut, Lord God. I thank you for rebuking the devourer. That when we give our tithes and our offerings, Lord, your promise is that you will rebuke the devourer, Lord, that enemy that comes to destroy our family, that comes to destroy our finances, that comes to try to destroy that stuff, never works. And so rebuke that enemy this morning with this seed. This is a seed of rebuke. We rebuke anything and everything that's not like God through our giving this morning with a cheerful heart when we say amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh, praise be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do we have any guests this morning? Can you just wave your hand if this is your first time here? Amen, baby. Good to see you. You know, if you're a guest too, amen. We love you. We love you. So glad you're here again, <laughs> hanging out with us. Amen. Destiny, it's good to see you too, baby. I love you so much. How's mom and them doing? Good? That's good. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Look here, we're a family, and as a family should we should come together, and we should come together to hear what thus saith the Lord. And so what I would love for you to do um, when you get your scripture, Genesis chapter 22, uh, verses 1 through 14, I would love for you to stand upon your feet as we reverence the reading of the holy word of God. Amen. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis is the book of beginnings. Yeah, Genesis is the book where we, our faith, uh, faith's foundation lies, like we, 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 everything we believe in started off in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bara. <laughs> uh, out of nothing created all things. But God was there all along. This book of Genesis is a beautiful book. If you haven't read through it several times, do it, man. It's, it's beautiful. Take your time. Slowly read through it and meditate. It will increase your faith. And you will see that imperfect people by faith are are perfected and matured and brought through by God. Amen? Amen. God is amazing. And uh, if he did it for Joseph, if he did it for Abraham, if he did it for Sarah, if he did it for anybody else, he'll do it for you. Y'all believe that this morning? Amen. God's doing something for you right now? Yes, he is. Oh, he's doing it right now. Genesis chapter 22, uh, verses 1 through 14. Uh, we're going to read it. Uh, in Jesus' name, and you'll see it up there on the screen. And it came to pass after these things that God, somebody said God, did tempt Abraham, or a yeah, Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him Verse 4 says that on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spoke spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, son, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire in the wood. But where? Where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will 
provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And so they went both of them together. Ah, yeah, somebody say together. together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, my God, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. <laughs> and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. <laughs> And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day. Somebody say this day. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. While you're seated, I want to speak to you for a moment from a message entitled Faith's High Point. Amen. Faith's high points amen praise god yeah uh, I, I, I have y'all ever seen any pictures of the himalayan mountains himalayan mountains you know the big old mountains you either be on them documentaries on national geographic or magazines or maybe somewhere on facebook social media you've seen some pictures of the himalayan mountains the beautiful mountains uh i would i always wanted to go and uh go hiking but i don't know if i'm fit and ready for that uh up those mountains <laughs> i think i'll go to table rock baby but uh it's only three hours away, and about maybe 3,000 feet up. But them Himalayan mountains, they, they, they're the tallest ones, man. They, they, they're huge. And I think that if we would take Abraham's story of faith and graph it on some paper, that, that those lines would look kind of like the peaks and the valleys of the Himalayan mountains. Oh, y'all ever been through your faith journey? You're going through a journey right now where you're up here, and then you're down here. And then you're kind of up here, then the plateaus, and you're up again and down. Yeah, if we graph Abraham's walk. If we look at his faith walk, the staggering pinnacles that are interspread with the deep valleys uh, is representative of his faith. Amen. And so uh, there's a lot of mountaintop experiences and valleys of doubt in all of our walk. We're all in a walk this morning, baby. I don't know where you are, but you're in a walk of faith. Might be going through the valley, might be on, kind of on your way up, might be at the top looking down, seeing some folk in the valley, amen? Wherever you are, I want you to understand that there is a high point in your faith amen. that God will bring you to. Yeah, yeah, and so, uh, you know, and I could be incorrect, but is Mount Everest in the Himalayan mountains? Yeah, it is. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, Mount Everest is the highest peak, I believe, in the world the very highest peak, that those that have journeyed to the top of Everest, you are literally on top of the world. And you can see so much from there. But um, in this story, if you can compare a little bit with me, uh, Abraham was on his way to Mount Moriah, which was going to be his Everest experience. Amen. And so uh, I think it's interesting how God takes us high and low and and um, when, when we see in the beginning of this passage of Scripture, God giving a commandment to Abraham, the Bible says in verse 1 that God did tempt Abraham. Now, I want you to understand the King James Version talks about being tempted, but that word tempt is really in the Hebrew means tested. Somebody say tested. Yeah, anybody's faith ever been tested? In other words, what God was doing is he was testing his faith. Yeah, especially those like us who are called those who, who, like us, are chosen. Amen. Sometimes things come up in our life not to destroy us, but God is really testing our faith. Look at somebody say, I'm being tested. Oh, there you go. Look at your husband. Look at your wife. Look at your friend. Look at your neighbor. And say it again out loud. I'm being tested. 
Yeah, yeah. And so I want you to understand that, that, that in this first verse, you know, the, the natural man might have a tendency to think that God is a God uh, who, who's calling Abraham to do something crazy like all the other nations to sacrifice their children and stuff like that. It wasn't that. This was just a test that was taking place. And I want you to understand that sometimes we see God wrongly because we, we, we in general can see God as a God who only is be benevolent, per se. Or, or what I mean is, God is a good God. Yes, he is. Now, all God is really doing is he's kind of like a, a, like, like, like a cruise ship director that's, that's that, whose task is to make everybody have a good time uh, w without having to worry about expenses. That once you pay the price, amen, you get on the ship, and, and all that cruise director is there to do is to make sure everything goes great. Well, listen, God ain't like that. He's a great God, but everything don't go great. Does that make sense? I mean, that's what I'm just thinking of, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and if that cruise director mess up, you get mad at them. But you can't get mad at God when things don't go the way you expect. Mm. So the idea, the, the idea here is that, that God has initiated a test that did not make Abraham feel good. God initiated a test to make him uncomfortable. God initiated a test in your life, not to destroy you, but to see where you lie in your faith. Because God is not ignorant. He really knows where we're at. He even knew where Abraham was at in his walk, but he had to solidify some things. He had to solidify some things. And I'm reminded of James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, where the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy. Can somebody say joy this morning? Yeah, I woke up with peace in my heart. Count it all joy. Not some of it, but count it how much all joy. When? When you fall into many different types of trials, knowing that the testing, somebody say test, the testing of your faith produces what? Patience. Ooh, but, 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 but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect, that you might be mature, that you might be complete, lacking nothing. And so it is our faith that is matured through our experiences of stressful testing in the same way your cardiovascular system is made stronger when you run. That's, mm, Lord, I'm preaching to myself right now. I run from here to there and I'm laying in the spirit, my heart with a boom, 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 boom. But it's the stress that strengthens the cardiovascular system. It, it's, uh, you know, what's another example? You know, it, for those of you that work out and go to the gym, it's, it's the stress, it's the tension that makes your muscles, amen, get bigger as you pump that iron. Yeah, and so your test is designed to strengthen your faith. Hallelujah. And, and this Mount Moriah example uh, is, 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 is something that we see that we can look into the book of James again and, and realize what the Lord is saying is that, that you, can, you can have faith, but if you don't have faith without, it is what? So, so your faith has to be put to work. And the, most of the times, I know my experience has been that God will send a test so that I will take my faith and put it to work. Oh, can I pause for a moment? Because I feel like somebody's in a test right now. I feel like somebody's going through a trial right now. I feel like somebody's wondering what in the world I've been, I've been doing this. I've been giving my tithes. I've been doing this. I've been doing this. I've been doing this. Now this. Listen, baby. It's, look at somebody say, it's only a test. And God wants you to take your faith. It doesn't matter if this much faith or this much faith. He just said, take your faith and put it to work. Woo, put it to work. Put it to work. Put it to work work hallelujah because faith is not lived out in a vacuum now nah, faith is not just lived out just by saying you have it man no nah, even james says again i'm going to james a whole lot but james is talking to me and talking to you show me your faith without your works but i'm going to show you my faith by my works in other words you talking to talk but i'm going to walk the walk baby I'm going to talk it and walk it. Man, some folk just talking it, but when it come down to walking it, they, they kind of kind of just standing still. Yes. And now there are times you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, but there's sometimes you just got to move by faith. Right. Mm, look at somebody say, you about to move. 
Woo, I don't know where you're moving to. I don't know what you're leaving, where you're coming from, and where you're going. But God said, you about to move out the state that you're in because the test has come to, to, to show you you actually got faith. See, some of you are doubting your own faith, but God said, I put it in you. You believe me for everything I said, but you're just going through some trials. And so let me put a test on you so you can tap down into that faith that is deep down in. Oh, so you can see the manifestation of what I want to do in your life. Am I preaching to somebody this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord was providing What was he providing Abraham? He was providing Abraham with a stage in which his faith could not only uh, be strengthened, but displayed. Do you know God has set you up for you to be strengthened and for you to show off the faith you got? Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Hallelujah. Some trust in the stock market, some trust on the job, some trust this and that, but I trust in the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and we are righteous this morning, and so we run to his name when we call his name. Ah, I feel like you're coming up the mountain to the top of the Himalayas with me this morning, because we got a high point we're about to get to. Hmm. And so I think the, 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 the part of the journey is the human aspect of it all. Because when we really look at our life, like, uh, it's kind of extreme, some of the stuff that God asks us to do. It's kind of crazy uh, how, how he asks us to do some, some, some stuff, you know, but, but, but that's how God is. But, it, it, but it, it does impact our human aspect of life. Think about what God was asking Abraham for a moment. What was God asking Abraham to do? I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to tell you. Isaac was promised to Abraham for so long. Abraham had no son in which he could give his inheritance to. And then when Abraham tried to do it his way, Ishmael was born. But that was not the promise. The promised seed was in Isaac. And at the appropriate and ordained and set time, God brought Isaac into being and so so this was as the Bible tells us Abraham's only son even though he had Ishmael but this was Abraham's only son so imagine the intensity of God was asking you to give up the very thing he promised imagine if he was asking you to give up your child imagine if he was asking you to give up your plan that the plan happened and now he says, give it up. Kill it dead. Could it be God is trying to get us to let go of something so he can manifest the real uh, depth of what it is that he's given us? Oh, Lord. But we hold on to things sometimes when God says, let go. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, this is your only son. And so as a dad, if, 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 you, know, you know, I have sons. Zion, to me, is my son, although he's not my biological son, you know, but he's, to me, he's my son. Will, that's my son. Amen. But AJ was born from my seed and my wife. You know, that's the fruit of the loom. Or, or, or the Bible says the loins. I'm sorry, fruit of the loom, loins, same thing. <laughs> That's my son. But God is telling me to give up my son, sacrifice my son. Man, I I can't sit here and lie to you. I don't know. I just don't know if I could have done it. Abraham did it, though. But imagine how deeply probably uh, he felt hurt or wondering, like, God, you tell me to give up the very thing you promised me? Mm -mm 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 Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And so we got to be careful when God begins to speak to us about the sacrifices we must make and not allow our natural affections to get in the way of the progress that God wants to bring in our life. Our natural desires, God understands our desires. He understands how we feel even when the manifestation of promises come into our life. But if God tells you to do something, look at your neighbor and say, just do it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I took that from Nike, but it sounds good. Just do it. 
And that's what I really love about my, my brother Abraham. Yeah, our father of faith, amen, that, that he just did it. I'm going to get into that in a moment, but I want you to understand a couple, couple of other things. Uh, wrapped up in Isaac was, was the promises of God to Abraham regarding his succession. But not only that, wrapped up in Isaac was the plan to save everybody. So, so you getting rid of the plan to save all humans. Because in Isaac shall I see be. It, 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 it is a prophetic seed that, that through Isaac, Christ would come. But if you kill Isaac, the Savior can't come. So God initially is asking Abraham to give up the salvation that's promised to all nations through him. So the promise of God required that Isaac should, should, should live while the command demanded that he should die. Y'all didn't hear that. The promises of who God requires that Isaac needs to live. But the command was from God that Isaac's got to die. And so here now we're dealing with a self-contradicting God. Has, it, has God ever told you something that just contradicted what he said before? No, I'm preaching. I'm... Lord, hey, God ever tell you something? And then the same situation, he tell you another thing, you like, this ain't reconciling Jesus. Like, like this, that you, you told me, but then you told me, and it's completely opposite. Man, look here. I, that's some of my greatest trials or tempts or tests or whatever you want to call it was when God told me one thing. And then in prayer, I know God told me the exact opposite. And I'm like, wait, hold up, God. You don't contradict yourself. But it feel like, is it me? Am I fool? Am I, like, thinking this thing? What's going on? I need to know, Lord, because I don't want to be outside your will. But I want to let you know that when God speaks, it might sound contradictory. But he's never contradicting what he says. And, and, and listen. Just like you change your mind, God can change his mind about anything. He's God. God can flip the script real fast if you want. So who are we to even say, Lord, you tell me two different things, you're contradicting yourself. No, I am God. I never change. I might speak to you, but see, you're at a limited perspective. So that's why it's called faith. Because some things you just can't grasp rationally, but by faith, by faith. Read the book of Hebrews, y'all. Read chapter 11. By faith, so-and-so did this. By faith, so-and-so did that. By faith, Gideon was able to do what he did. By faith, hallelujah, Abraham. By faith, Isaac. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. If you want to get to the high point, it's coming through your faith. And let me tell you something, unbelief, somebody say unbelief. unbelief. Uh, yeah, unbelief will stumble over these problems while your mature faith, somebody say mature. Uh, unbelief and maturity, that's what we're talking about right here. That if you got a mature faith, amen, your, your mature faith will wait, hallelujah, to see, hallelujah, what God is thinking in the distant eternal realm concerning my temporary situation that my faith is strong enough that I understand my mind can't figure it out and so I will wait for the manifestation of what God want me to do but if he give me a commandment as excruciating as it may be whoo, as painful as it might be as touching as it might be as displacing as it might be God said if he speaks all you got to do is receive and do Look at somebody say, quit trying to figure it out. Oh, God, we try to figure out stuff so much, and I'm almost done. But look at somebody and say it out through your mask. Quit trying to figure it out. I know you can't see their lips moving, but shout through your mask and say, quit trying to figure it out. If I could sing it like this, work it out, work it out. Work, uh, work it out. You know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't know that, but look it up. Look it up. Maybe we'll sing that again here soon. 
But there's a lot of small details that I don't want to skip over here in the story that highlights the faith of our old man, Abraham. Our father. One big thing I noticed is that in verse 2, the Bible uh, tells us that God does not give Abraham specifics. He says, go to the general region of Moriah. Mm -mm -mm. General region of Moriah. And, 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 and when you get there, that's it. And, and when you get there, just offer him a burnt offering on one of those mountains that I will tell you of when you get there. That's why, see, people get stuck because they want God to be so specific, but God don't follow our specificities. He doesn't, he doesn't care about the details of what we want. He loves us, but he knows how to make sure that our faith is an authentic faith. If he gives you specifics, your faith may not be authentic because you know more than you should know. If you know more than you should know, it is no longer faith. It is your knowledge and your rational ideas to get you there. But God said, I'm giving you generals this morning so that I can see, will you go by faith? Mm. Yes, Lord. And I, what I love is that on the strength of that word, Abraham prepared. On the strength of that one small word, Charles, Abraham prepared. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 3, he rose early in the morning. Woo, God. Get, has God ever spoke to you and it was just so, even though it wasn't specific, you know it was God. And boy, you wake up like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to develop this logo. Oh, I got to go ahead and get my business license. Oh, I got to go ahead and pray this prayer. Oh, I got, just because God spoke one thing to you in general. Your faith, a person of faith, your faith, something will go on on the inside of you. I cannot really articulate, hallelujah, with words. But I remember when I got saved in 1996 and I was in my duplex apartment speaking in tongues all night long. And when I had the open vision of a stadium with white people, black people, Korean, Chinese, and I could hear them all shouting. I wanted to get up early that next morning and go do what God chose for me to do. I mean, I woke up early. I ran to the church Saturday morning. I had to tell somebody, one, that I got the Holy Ghost, and somebody else, I need to let them know, man, God called me to preach. I was ready to take Mike that Sunday morning, but, you know, I had to be, I had to be developed first. But, you know, but that's what faith will do. Abraham prepared. Mm -hmm. He rose up early in the morning and went to the place where which God told him. There was no delayed response. Oh, God, I could preach that for a whole hour. There was no delayed response. Why are you waiting on the command? If God said, do it, do it, baby. Well, you might say, I don't know how. Well, just listen to what God said because he will give you all of that later. But if God said to do something, do it. There was no delayed response with Abraham. Three days, this man and his son traveled together. Three days, y'all, the, the three days. Oh, yeah, that's how many days, right? Think about Christ now, three days. The father and son traveled together. Wow. Listen here. The, 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 the old man, right, was troubled. The young man was puzzled. Isaac like, I don't see no offering. Abraham like, what in the world is going on? Well, I got to kill my son. Mm. But they pressed on. Yeah. See, your faith walk is a press. Some of you pressed on to get here this morning. But because you were obedient when God said, come, Ooh, raise your hand if you pressed here this morning. Raise your hand if the enemy tried to get you to stay home in your bed while it was raining outside because you didn't want to get your hair messed up. Well, raise your hand in the air and say, oh, my God, I had to press this morning. I, I had to press through my trial, my feelings, my emotions, my situations, my ups, my downs. But I'm here this morning. And listen, y'all, because you pressed your way, you about to have a high point in your life. Because you just pressing to come out this morning means that you showed God your faith by your works. Yeah, yeah, but they, they pressed on and there was no partial obedience. There is never partial obedience. There's only obedience and disobedience. There's always, there's either following what he says or not following. There's no middle line. There's no fence you can straddle. There's no, none of that. It's either I'm going to do it or not. I'm so glad you woke up. I'm so glad you joined us online and said, I'm doing it. I I'm doing it this morning. I'm tuning in. I'm taking my notes. I'm soaking it up. I'm receiving it. I, I know I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, but I just believe there's something in this word that's going to take me from here where I'm at to where I'm going. 
Woo, I feel like preaching, y'all. I got to talk about a couple more details real quick before I get to the end. The Bible tells us, mm-hmm, oh, God, the Bible tells us. Stay here. Somebody say, stay here. My God, help me preach this. And I did not plan this, but thank you, Jesus. Stay here with the donkey. Mm. Stay here with the donkey. Hmm. Why? Why, Abraham? Well, the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Some people can't go with you on this journey. They will only go a certain distance, but everybody's not meant to go to the far distant place that God's taking you. And so it, but it requires you to say, stay here. You can't come no further. Now, it doesn't mean that person won't see what God is going to do through you. Because God going to work it out. God going to do it through you. Because he did say, uh, a little bit later, we're going to come back. And you're going to see. Me and my son. He didn't say how it was going to look. But Abraham believed that we're going to go up. We're going to do what God said. And when we come back, don't you think I'm going to, don't you think that there's going to be, oh my God. You think there's going to be loss. But I'm coming back with something in my hands. I'm coming back with a testimony, baby. You're coming back next Sunday with a testimony. You're going back to your job with a new story. Because you operated by faith uh, and you left where you were. God said, I'm going to show some folk that, that, that didn't think you was going to come back right. God going to show them who he is through you. That's why the book of Hebrews chapter 11 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. And so to this young lad, to Isaac, to the promise, the promise, the promise questioning, uh, wanting to know how uh, they could sacrifice <laughs> without an animal, uh, the, the, the promise that's saying, why are you giving me up? I'm the thing God gave you. The promise is questioning the Father. The promise is questioning the Father. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken me? The father says back, my son, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Woo! So we see here Abraham being tested, amen, his faith being tested. And hallelujah, uh, the testing of Abraham's faith shows that this was not like some type of reckless abandonment uh, of, of the promise of God. It wasn't some type of irrational behavior. Like folk will point you out and say, he acting fool. Why would he leave this to go to that? I don't know who the Lord's speaking to online this morning. God told you to leave. You know you got to leave to come to this. Because it's not in that anymore. Your time is up there. You need to turn and tell those people, stay here. I'm going yonder. So I'll see you in church next Sunday. It wasn't an uncaring decision. It wasn't a calloused decision. It was not a decision of irresponsibility, but it was Abraham's faith that was relentlessly locked in to the premise and not so much even the promise. Because a promise always is on a premise. Oh, God, come on. Can I preach this thing? What is the premise? That God is faithful. Woo, baby. Don't build on nothing else or a saying. But if you build on the faithfulness of God, the premise of who God is, he is Alpha and Omega. There is nothing that can move him and get him to do what, what we want to do. God is faithful. So build your promise on his premise and then follow what God tells you to do. And you're going to walk to the highest heights you've ever seen in your life, baby. Because God is faithful. To, to, to bring to pass what he promised. 
that even if you kill the sa even if you kill the promise, because God is faithful, He's able to raise it up. Ooh, God. That's why sometimes God says, let it go. Not because he's trying to take it from you, but he's trying to increase your faith and strengthen your faith that you might display that. Even if I let it go, I trust that God can bring it back. That's why I've heard mothers and, and, and fathers who had children that were going through rough times and they were turning against God, that, that, that God spoke to them and said, you just got to let them go. Not let them go, giving up, but just put them in the hands of God. Woo, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm-hmm. Anything that would get in the way of God's ultimate purpose in your life, God knows how to remove it. Any issues you're going through, anything that's, that's in the face of you and God that's trying to stop your progress, God knows how to move obstacles out your way. So he pressed on. Not always, the Bible says, knowing the how. Mm -hmm. He pressed on, not always knowing the why. Can I preach a little bit? He pressed on, not always knowing the where. Mm -hmm. He pressed on, not always knowing what. Somebody say what. He, he, he pressed on, not knowing any of that. The only thing he knew was the who. I don't know your how this morning. I didn't come to answer your, your, your how questions. I didn't come to answer your where questions. I didn't come to answer your what and your why questions, but I came to give you an answer on who. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God that manifested himself in the flesh, suffered, bled, and died, and rose from the grave for you and I. So I don't know all that other stuff, but I know who promised you what he promised you, baby. And if you can grab hold of Jesus Christ this morning, if you can look to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith this morning my God you're gonna go to high heights in the Lord mm. God's stretching your physical limitations God's stretching your emotional limitations God is stretching you psychologically and socially and intellectually and spiritually as his children because there is somewhere he needs to take you, amen, that will only be manifested in your faithful stretch. Somebody look at somebody and say, I'm stretching, I'm stretching, I'm stretching, I'm, I'm stretching this morning. My faith is being stretched because I'm being tested, but my faith will not pop. It will not, it will not shatter. It will not break. My faith is being strengthened because of the stretch. You, you are in God's uh, workout room. He paid your, your, your price. Amen. So just like Planet Fitness has a monthly fee you got to pay, God already paid the price. Uh, but you are also in his fitness room. And so he's stretching you this morning and he's he's trying to wake you up a little bit through your test your test uh, is only designed baby to strengthen you so that you could display your muscles that's when I need some biceps like Apostle Davenport be like boom he's strengthening you so you can see look what the Lord has done mm, yeah my God and so your incident is a test. Your incident is a test that turns to a triumph. Come on, y'all. Am I preaching to 10 people? I need 10 people to raise your hand. If I'm preaching to you this morning, your incident is a test that's about to turn into a triumph. Because having, having arrived, having, having arrived, to the top of Mount Moriah, which, which incidentally is the site of Solomon's temple. Mount Moriah is the site of Solomon's temple. Mount Moriah is Jerusalem, where, where, where the mosque of Omar is right now. Hallelujah. But, but Abraham was there first. 
Abraham was in Jerusalem first, where, 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 where the temple, where, where the temple uh, 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 is still there, but had been destroyed uh, as Jesus prophesied it would be. Amen. That, that, that there where Solomon's temple was is the Mount Moriah. If you go to Jerusalem right now, you're walking on the same mountain that Abraham walked on. You're walking on the same mountain that Jesus walked on. Hallelujah. Your faith will take you to a high point. You won't even realize, oh, I'm in the same place the others were at. Because others had to go through what you're going through. And if they made it, baby, you can make it. If Abraham did it, you could do it. If Jesus did it, you could do it. My God, I don't know who the Lord is speaking to this morning. Uh, but your faith is taking you, taking you to a high point. Woo, Jesus. So God can give you the victory. So Abraham realized that even in my high places, I got I to gotta build an altar. Don't get so high where you don't stay low. Don't get so exalted where you don't keep yourself humble. Build an altar in your high points that when you're on top of your Himalayan mountain of faith, amen, that you fall on your knees first and you say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you for bringing me through the valleys, uh, all through the crooked places. Uh, when I thought I was going to fall through the cracks and the ice, uh, you made a bridge where there was no bridge. Uh, you brought me up to the top of where I'm at, so I'm going to humble myself. Uh, ah, because the highest you go can never, can never reach where God is. So look at somebody say, build an altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build an altar at your high point. Uh, learn how to pray even up there. Don't get comfortable when you're up there. I think that's why the oxygen is so thin so you don't get comfortable. So you know you need assistance even in your high places. Oh, don't ever think you don't need assistance when you get the victory, baby. Hallelujah. Your incident is a test that turns into a triumph and you got to maintain that triumph. And so he prepared the altar and he prepared for sacrifice and, and let me tell you something when you get on your high point you still don't know what's going to happen when you're at the top and, and God opens the door and you know you're sitting on your Himalayan mountain you still ain't going to know everything but all you got to do is go off of what God said because Abraham was absolutely sure that this faithful God was going to do something. And then to the amazement, what we see, hallelujah, uh, 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 we, we, we see Abraham start gathering up the wood. And hallelujah. And then Abraham takes his son. You know, imagine your, Isaac looking at Abraham like, oh, my God, Dad, what you about to do to me, man? Abraham takes Isaac, binds him up. takes the promise throws him on the altar this teenager sacrificing him just like god told him to do my god and all i see listen oh god this is so much revelation i'm trying to get through it because it's already 12 13. your 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 the thing god promised you still must be able to acquiesce or, 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 or to, to yield and surrender to the big picture of what God wants to do through it. Sometimes we get so caught up in the promise. It's all about the promise. But it's not. It's all about God who promises. So if you're not willing to take your promise and fully acquiesce it, fully give it up, fully allow God to do whatever you want to do through it, then you will never see the full manifestation of the big picture of what God is really doing. So Isaac says, I acquiesce, I, I, I yield, I surrender, I, 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 anything that would hold me back. Here I am, daddy. Here I am, daddy. Here I am, dad. Here I am, my father. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. He, he binds the promise. Grabs the knife at the placing Isaac on the altar. And while his hand is high and his heart breaking at the same time, because you know how it is when you got to sacrifice something that God promised you. Oh, God, God. OK, OK. I hear you, Lord. OK. The Lord told somebody I'm going to give you this money. And God gives it to that person. Now he says, take it and give it to the church or take it and bless so and so. 
but Lord, I was going to do this with that. Oh, my God. See, because maybe it, what, what it really is, is we think the promise that God has given us, we're to do one thing with it. When we're actually supposed to do something different. So he tests our faith to get us to realize, no, I need you to do something else with this. And if you sacrifice it, don't worry, I got your back. But if you don't, see, I'm, I believe, now this is Abraham speaking, not God. I believe maybe that if Abraham did not, he would have lost Isaac. Come on, come on, walk with me on this one. That if Abraham was not willing to let go, you know how it is when some folk ain't willing to let go of what, what, what God that brought the past in their life and God strip it. But you got to be willing that if, it's, if, if, it's, if, if I got to let go of everything, I would rather have the willingness than God forces it. Thank you, Jesus. And so the Bible tells us, do not lay your hand on the lad. Man, knife in the air, heart breaking before God. I'm about to kill my promise. I'm about to kill my boy. I'm about to stab my son and make an, make an offering. And you understand they slit the throat of the lamb when they, when they made offerings. So he would have had to slit the throat of Isaac, y'all. This is deep, y'all. But he's while faith, while faith is stretching, while faith is stretching, Willing to make the sacrifice. Willing to, to, to sacrifice the time while, while faith is stretching. God says, don't lay your hand on him. Don't you do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear me. Woo! Because you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And so I love how God intervenes at the appropriate time. Yes, he does. And, 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 and there was no disputing the, the triumph of, of God's divine timing. Y'all understand that God has a divine time for you? That there is a timing that you're waiting on. You're thinking it should have already happened. Oh, or you're thinking maybe I, it was supposed to have happened. Or, or, oh, my God. But see, God has a divine timing for everything. That, that this was the ultimate brinkmanship. That, that he was on the brink of something. But God knows how to step in at the right time. Not a minute too soon. Not a minute too late. Hallelujah. That's why they say God is an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Or not a minute too soon. Or not a minute too late. Look at somebody say that. God is on time. He's on time because he's outside of time. He's not ruled by time. He has a set time. And he knows how to, how to step in. So Abraham had to be taken to this place, this point, uh, to see that what was in his heart, uh, not only... God would see it, but that Abraham would see what God placed in your heart. Your test, Jesus Christ, your test is designed not only for God to see what's in your heart, but for you to see what God put in there. You got more in you than you know. You got more faith than you realize, baby. You're calling your faith mustard seed, but God is calling it a watermelon. God is calling your faith so large you don't even understand how big your faith is. And so that's why you're going through your temporary test. Because he's maturing your faith. He's perfecting your faith. You're about to walk on water, Peter. And this time you ain't going to sink. You ain't going to sink this time. You're about to walk on water. You're about to speak those things that are not as though they were and see the manifestation of it because of this test. Because of this test has taken you a high point in the Lord. This test has taken you to a high point because your faith is being increased as I prophesy to you. I command and declare and decree that this test, somebody say this test, this test, come on, preach back to me, church. This test uh, that I'm in right now is designed uh, to increase uh, my faith. Uh, hallelujah to God. Uh, I wonder if we got some saints up in here that understand the words coming out my mouth uh, that your faith is about to increase. 
Yeah. Abraham. Abraham, Abraham. You are the children of Abraham. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Every promise God made Abraham is meant for you to see too. That's why they call it the blessings of Abraham. That's why they say, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Everywhere. Look at somebody say, everywhere. Everywhere. This going to change your footsteps today and this week. That everywhere, the place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, it is yours. It is yours. Ooh, Shema. It is yours. Hmm. Abraham, 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 Abraham. Children of Abraham. I need you to look up this morning. I need to look over your sh I need you to do this. Look over your shoulder real quick. Do you see what's behind you? There's a ram in the thicket. There's, there, there, there's a ram in the thicket. That, that God has an answer to your test. Look over your shoulder again because you didn't see it the first time. But there is an answer to your test that God is sending your way. Hallelujah. It's caught up so your answer can slide away. My God, I feel like preaching. Somebody got an answer that has already been tied up, bound up, and positioned for you to grab hold of. And all you got to do is turn around and say, I received the answer. I received the answer. I thought I had to let this promise go, but I received the answer. I got a ram in the bush, son. Uh-huh. I want you to offer this up instead. That's called a substitutionary sacrifice. Uh, that the thing that was supposed to be offered was replaced by what God designed to be. Oh, that's why Jesus came down uh, through 42 generations uh, and entered into our world uh, because we should have been on the cross, uh, but there was a ram in the bush. Uh, there was an answer, hallelujah, before the world was formed, uh, and that answer is Jesus. Uh, he is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. Uh, my God, help me preach. That's why, that's why your incident is a test. Turn the divine triumph. You didn't know how he was going to do it, but he did it. You didn't know how he was going to make a way, but he made a way. Mm -hmm. You didn't know how he was going to pull you out. But he pulled you out. You didn't know how he was going to deliver you. But he delivered you. But pastor, I'm still in it. But God is telling you, you about to come out. I wish I had some come out folk up in here. Everybody else coming out the closet. You need to come out your child this morning. You want to wake up. Ah, wake up this morning. Ah, get out of your stool of doubt and worry and regret. Because God is getting ready to pull you out, baby. He is your answer. Yes, he is. Listen. The impact, the impact of what God's about to do is going to be so great. You're going to say the same thing Abraham said. I call the name of this place, the Lord will provide. You call the name of your place so many other things. But what God is about to do is going to be so impactful in your life that all you're going to be able to do in every conversation, uh, in every communication, is say the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will provide. Anybody know he's going to provide? Oh, God is about to provide. I feel provision in this house. Mm -hmm. He is Jehovah 
Shire, the Lord my provider. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm just so excited because my name's Abraham. I wish you was as excited as I am. I wish you could show how how excited you are to God this morning. Because just because your name ain't Abraham doesn't mean that you aren't his sons and daughters. And we are heirs and joint heirs through Jesus Christ. Look at somebody say the Lord will provide. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. I just heard the Lord say, I, now I want you to tell them the what. I told you the who. And earlier, God told me to tell you, you ain't going to know the how. You ain't going to know the why. You ain't going to know all the other, the what. But now, here's this contradicting God telling me to tell you now the what. Because you got it. Oh my God, y'all Y'all got it, y'all. So here's your what. If you're sick, you're going to be healed. If you got disease, you are healed through the blood of Jesus. Your what? God is about to open up a door of finances for you. What? God is healing your heart emotionally from the abuse of your past. What is about to happen in your life? You're about to be healed from turmoil. You're about to be healed from abandonment. You're going to be healed from reckless abandonment of your father. The rejection of your earthly dad has caused you to reject God. But because you hear the word of God this morning, God said, I'm going to heal that place that you, ha you haven't been healed from. Ooh, my God, I feel like preaching up in here. Look at somebody say, the Lord will provide. Men of God, women of God, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. He's providing right now. He's providing right now. Do you believe this morning that out of his heavenly abode, he's a pouring out the Holy Ghost. He's pouring out your miracle. He's pouring out your breakthrough. Come on up to the high point. Come on up to the high point. Yeah, Lord. Your faith, your faith has put you, this morning, y'all, your faith has put you in a position to, to observe God's dazzling triumph. Anybody that's ever climbed to the top of the Himalaya mountains has the most beautiful sight they've ever seen. Baby, because you will have the faith this morning, your high point is going to show off what God is doing how, so brilliantly. Woo, Jesus. I got a note down here that I put down. That God's people, through faith, somebody say faith, place themselves in the exact place where God will deliver exactly what is needed at exactly the right time and in exactly the right manner. Just like the Apostle Paul said, but when the fullness of time had come, not a minute too soon or a minute too late, when the fullness of time come, God sent his only son forth, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us. So having gained Abraham's full attention, the Lord took the opportunity to let him know, oh, here you go. Blessing, and I will bless thee. God ain't never lie. Blessing, and I will bless you. Multiplying, and I will multiply you. Somebody about to get multiplication in your life. I'm going to make your descendants as the stars of heaven. Why are you worried about your son and your daughter this morning? 
I don't know who that's for, but God said, don't worry. Just give yourself to me and I will make sure they're all right. And you, Abraham, and your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you've obeyed my voice. Look at that triumph. Look at that triumph and communication from God because you, because your faith was obedient. I'm going to bless your socks off. Your, 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 your incident. The incident you in right now is a test that has turned into a triumph. And even though you don't see the triumph yet, because you are still in your test, isn't it pretty awesome that God has gave you a glimpse into what about to happen in your life? That something is about to go down in your life and it's nothing but triumphant. Nothing but triumphant. God has given you that glimpse this morning. Your test has turned into triumph. It's, it's, a, it's a type of Christ. It's, it's what God did in the beginning. And how he came down and suffered and bled and died and rose from the grave and triumphed over death, hell, and the grave. So that we could be saved. Can we all stand on our feet and give glory to God? Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. You walking out here triumphant. Oh. I don't know who this is for. But I just heard God tell me to tell you to go to the place of your need and speak to it this week. Go to the place of your need and speak to it this week. Somebody that's going to be a bank, somebody that's going to be a property, somebody that's going to be your child in their bed while they're asleep. I don't know what your need is this morning, but the Lord just told me to tell you to go to the place of your need and speak to it. Speak what? What you know God has promised. Anybody receive that? Raise your hand if you receive it. Raise your hand if you receive it. Heavenly Father, unto you we lift our hands as a sign of our faith that not only will we speak to the place of our need, but we speak to the place of our brothers and our sisters' needs. That by faith we speak and our words are sent and you perform, O oh God. And so, Father, I ask you, Lord God, blessing, you shall bless them. Multiplying, you shall multiply them. Father, that by this time next week, they will return with a testimony, a specific testimony of how you turned their test into triumph. Father, we thank you for this high point this morning. You have laid the graph of faith in our life, and we are at a high point right now. And though we may have future valleys, we know that you know how to get us to every high point in our life, and that sooner or later, we will be on a high point that lasts forever. Lord, I bless your people now that they are covered in your blood. That no hurt, harm, or danger will come upon them. That your protection will be with them. And that you are the Lord God who provides. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. And we bless him. I want to pause for a quick moment and open these doors. If you want to make First Fruits Community Church your church home. Then you may do so at this time by coming up front. We will receive you, and I can't promise you I will be perfect as a pastor. I ain't going to promise you that, but I promise you I'll pastor after God's own heart. I'll teach you, train you, equip you, pray for you, correct you, maybe rebuke you sometimes. But I promise you, according to God's promise, that this is the right place for you. Will there be one? I think because most everybody already here. I just always like to open that door. 
And if there's somebody want to be saved this morning, oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, that's good. Why don't you just stay right here, baby? Yeah. All right. Thank God for a good wife, man. Good first lady. She just a couple things, and we're going to pray for the blessing of this family and what God's about to do. And I prayed for y'all last night. Real quick, nothing long, but I know y'all, I know God was bringing y'all here. And, and, and Brother Tech uh, can testify that when I saw you pass the, uh, the and, oh yeah, I'm <laughs> looking. When you passed by and came in, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say? There's something specific that God's about to do. Oh my God. Listen, y'all, your test, that's all. You got just testing your faith because it's in you. God about to do great things with y'all. Before I pray for you and do what God says, I want to say that the kids are going back to school. Some of them already have, but the, you know, the rest are going back, I think, tomorrow, ain't it? So we're going to, after we do this, we're going to pray for, just in general, for our children. And um, is there somebody that came to be baptized in Jesus' name this morning? They're, they're, they may be on their way. That's fine. I ain't going home today until about 7 or 8. So um, whenever they get here, I'll bury them in Jesus' name. All right? Sound good. But if there's anybody else who want to be baptized, we got clothes. We can put you down, okay? Bring you up. I ain't going to leave you under the water. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Come on up here. Come on here. Okay, what, what y'all need? What y'all want? Y'all want to become members? What? <laughs> I thought y'all were coming for prayer. I know y'all coming for that, but y'all want to join the church? Oh, man. Oh, God. I, I just love God, man. I love y'all. Man, I love you, brother. Like, I've known you a long time. I mean, I've been watching you in the services and just seeing what God is doing with you. And uh, there's no doubt that God does all things well. I know he led you here. And um, I just believe that y'all are bringing a faith with you that's going to make things happen. I believe that, that as God feeds you his word here, that you're going to see everything at home change. You're going to see everything in just your whole life is going to transform because God God has preordained certain things that have to happen, and they will happen, no doubt about it. And you're going to see it. And listen, I don't know what it is, but when it happens, y'all going to be able to tell it to the congregation and whoever else. Who knows? Maybe you write a book about it. I don't know. But whatever it is, you're going to share it, and it's going to release people. It's going to release people. I, I, I just got to speak what I said to the Lord. It's going to release people. And... um. From the womb of your mother, God had his hand on you. That's why nothing could ever destroy you, man. That's why nothing could ever destroy you, son. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Because God is in love with you, son. And nothing will ever destroy you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nothing. 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 Nothing shall by any means harm you, sir. That's why you're still alive. God ain't through with you. He's doing new things with you, sir. Behold, I do a new thing. Forget, forget the things of your past. Behold, I do new things in your, your life. In the name of Jesus, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body. The Lord is doing new things in your life, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I anoint you for your purpose. I anoint you for your purpose. I anoint you for the promise. I anoint you for the faithfulness of God. For the manifestation, hallelujah, of your triumph. In the name of Jesus. Okoshaya, hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. I sever, I sever you from your past. I sever the things from your past that try to destroy you now. Walk in the liberty of the Lord Jesus. Walk in the freedom of the Lord Jesus. Walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Walk, walk in it. Hallelujah. Live under the anointing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Oh, Jesus. Everywhere you go. That precious Your name mind is blessed. Your body is blessed in the name Demons, of Jesus. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. The enemy came at you one way, but this morning the enemy is fleeing. 
speak for all realms of your life. When I bless you and your family. Call I bless you and your children. I bless you name. and your offspring. I bless you and your home. I bless Jesus. you and your purpose. Hallelujah. I bless you now. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. In the name of Pray. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We receive them in this house as your son and daughter in the precious, matchless name of Jesus Christ. The church say amen. Amen. And we seal it in Jesus' name. A release, a release. Can we put our hands together? A release. Tell me. A release. Tell me who can. A release. Who a release. Can stand. Stand, baby. When, when, we, when we call I want to say to you sir as your wife speaks into you that you are surrounded with some strong men in this house look at me and look at this and look at him and look at him look at all these men look at all these men you got men you got strong men in this house who God has now placed you amongst you're not in this by yourself we here with you, brother. Walking right alongside you. Amen. And anything we could do to be a blessing, you let us know. Amen. Brothers, can we put our hands together for this man of God? I know we want to hug him, but you, 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 you fist bump him. There you go. Something like that. I know. We're trying to be careful. You know, but we, we trust God, but we're still being careful. But uh, woman of God, same thing. Strong women. Strong women. Faithful women in this house. Faithful women in this house. And you are one too. More faithful than you give yourself credit for. More faithful than you give yourself credit for. God has prepared you for this time. He has. He has. And so we love you. And we're so glad to have you. I know we already got your information in the system, but we'll double check. And can we put our hands together? Why don't you turn around? Give me a mic. Can I get your mic real quick? I just want to put it up to their mouth. And, or, or what's the MC mic? You got it? Grab me that mic. I just want you to introduce yourself real quick. Thank y'all for hanging in here. Just tell them your name so they know. Amen. There you go, sir. This, we are Jonathan and the Lord is great. And we've come here to join First Fruits. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jonathan and the Lord is great. We love you so much. You can be seated. Oh, man. Welcome to this house. Amen. We are grateful. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Anybody else? Beautiful, beautiful. Thank y'all so much. Can we put our hands together for our musicians one more time? Appreciate you. Oh, with everybody standing, what we're going to do is we're going to ask uh, Brother Fred, if you can, row by row, um, lead those who are leaving out. And so the, what, the only people we need is to stay right now is just our leaders, amen, and our volunteers, those that are volunteers, pretty much our leaders. Uh, because I just have a, about 10 minutes uh, I need with you. So, uh, Brother Fred's going to lead us out. Amen. In Jesus' name. Oh, oh, Father, God, thank you for my wife and the saints. Lord, our children are going back to these schools. We know there's a plague in the land, but you, we also know that you are the one that covers us with blood. So, Lord, I, by faith, apply the blood of your son to the doorpost of every classroom to the doorposts of every school in South Carolina, to the doorposts of our homes, oh God, the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth be applied by our faith right now, that all of our kids are protected from hurt, harm, or danger that the enemy would try to bring, that, Lord, we foil the plans of Satan and his evil spirits in Jesus' name, that have no ability to operate in this territory because we take authority over the schools right now. That even as we progress to move forward with different projects, the Teacher Love Project, that even the teachers now would turn their hearts to Jesus. That they would lead our kids in a major revival. Oh God, in Jesus' name, that our kids would grow and learn everything they're supposed to. And then some, that they would excel in all things. And we'll forever give your name praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Starting from the back, Brother Fred, lead each row out, one row at a time. And then leaders just stick around for a moment.